So welcome everybody to our uh, a new segment in our Women Lead um, online forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas. I'm your host today, and today we have a subject matter in the hot a subject matter expert. Boy, I can't talk today in the hot seat who's willing to say, "Go ahead and ask me anything." And our session today lasts for about an hour. If you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guests and the attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. Uh, but if there's something you'd like to contribute anonymously, just put it in the chat and I'd be happy to share it for you. And our topic today is Thrive as a Speaker Presenter in Virtual Times. And I am so excited to introduce today's subject matter expert, Shelley Harrison. So let me tell you just a little bit about her. Shelly is the founder and CEO of Luminary Leaders, a speaker management and consulting company. And in service to their clients, they engage in many facets of business to clearly monetize the brand, the stage appearance, and live events. And they also provide packaging services, pre-post event planning, and they help their speakers build a winning business plan, as well as providing other strategic areas of the business. So I am super excited to hear what Shelly has to share with us today. So go ahead, take it away. Well, thank you very much, Patty. And everyone, I'd like to welcome you onto this um, virtual live um, event. And I could imagine how all of you are feeling right now. I know that, you know, we have stay at home orders and we're very limited to what we, you know, what we can do, but I can tell you uh, with the work that we are doing, um, my company, we've been around for about seven years. We're going in our, into our seventh year. And I have been on the phone for the past, you know, many, many years and, and months and days talking with event planners and people that are booking speakers, um, presenters and, and, you know, building workshops. Um, what the common theme is right now with a lot of the event planners, um, they are unsure. Um, they, you know, a lot of them are, um, I like to use the word hybrid, um, and just like, you know, the suit talks tonight where they're, you know, simulcast, uh, live virtually, and then also they're doing, doing the event live. And I think you'll see a lot more of that, um, uh, based on, you know, just the, the people don't want to go out. They don't want to get in large groups. Mm -hmm. Um, there are some large events. In fact, there's one in, um, Las Vegas that I talked with the executive director and they were planning to bring almost 5,000 people together in Las Vegas. Yeah. And it's called the Freedom Fest. And it's a very, it's political. It's, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts to that event. And they were in crisis mode, you know, just trying to, you know, make sure that they had every single detail contained and, and, you know, making sure for the safety of, of all of their uh, attendees. Um, but the, you know, the virtual world is, it, it's not just the Zoom, you know, it's not just, um, you know, getting on and, and having a meeting. It's podcast shows. It's, you know, getting yourself out there in, and I know Eileen can attest to this, um, magazines and, you know, anywhere where there's an opportunity to be featured or to really get your message out there. Um, I know a lot of, we, we have a roster of probably, gosh, I think now about 25 speakers. And, you know, some of them are very high level. Um, others are either, you know, just getting started or, or maybe they're, you know, they're halfway in, you know, where they're, they're just now starting to, to, you know, get on podcasts and have that confidence level. Um, but there are a lot of different ways that you can reach out to event planners. Mm -hmm. And it's basically starting at, you know, at the very foundation of building a relationship, um, going in, looking at, you know, the, like, for example, we'll do a, a keyword search for, um, you know, conferences 2020, and you'd be surprised what comes up. I mean, all it takes is just getting the information, finding out who, uh, like, for example, on the Freedom Fest, when, when I reached out to them, I was actually, one of our clients wanted a media pass for that event, and we were trying to get her in to be able to do live interviews with a lot of the speakers. So, you know, with that, I called 
directly to the executive director. She was more than willing to talk with me because of you know the what I do and with my company. And it's just building that rapport and understanding their event and you know really um, showing them empathy because they're they're struggling too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, uh, some groups that we've worked with, uh, and for those of you in San Diego, um, the publishers and writers group, um, Carla Olson is someone that we work with. And I think Eileen, you might know uh, who she is or no, no. Um, so they do their meetings uh, live and they do them monthly. And they have them in Orange County and San Diego, but because of the pandemic, um, they were very indifferent to doing Zoom meetings. They, you know, they figured their their um, members wouldn't want to do that. And I kind of had that conversation with the founder, and I said, you know, let me share with you. And I gave her some insight. We had, you know, some conversations, and now they're doing their meetings virtually. And you know, we're able to get get people, you know, booked for their for their events. Um, so I want to find out what questions you all have because it's ask me anything and I, <laughs> I'm hoping I can, you know, really add value. And if you have specific questions, um, you know, I'd love to have a conversation because I've, I've talked to thousands of speakers over the years. I've talked with, you know, thousands of event planners and, and I'm, I mean, I'm just filled with ideas and thoughts and, and whatever I can share and help you with. Well, I think, Shelley, one thing that you just said is, is pretty indicative of the climate today, you know, is that a lot of times people have this all or nothing mentality, or mm -hmm. we've always done it like this, so it can't possibly work any other way. And, you know, we're finding that with people who said, oh, our employees can't work from home until they had to work from home. Okay. So, you know, you're forced with either shut down and don't do anything and and hope to god people remember your name when this is all over or mm -hmm. you figure out a way to do something you know to do something different so i think the advice that you're giving to some of these event planners is very very critical you know and encouraging probably as well yeah and, and thank you for pointing that out patty because i think you know kind of going back to building that relationship you know they they're very passionate about their events and they have a system, they have a plan. And somebody like me who comes along and says, Oh, look at our speakers. You know, I have to make myself, I, I have to be a differentiator. I can't be just like everybody else that's calling them and trying to, you know, provide speakers. And what I find is going the back way in regard to building that relationship. So we might start with, you know, we'll, we'll look at their event, we'll look at, you know, who the speakers were the previous year. Now, if they're virtual, you know, we have a better chance of getting any of our speakers booked because it's virtual. You know, they don't have to fly or, or, or you know, um, travel. So with, you know, with these events, when, when we're calling these event planners, it's, it's critical that we understand their mission, the theme of their event, you know, what they really need to bring to, you know, to be an event that's going to be able to sell tickets. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that by linking, you know, using LinkedIn, leveraging LinkedIn, um, connecting with them. So you just go to their, their conference or their event and you look at who those key players are, connect with them on LinkedIn, you know, send them a private message, you know, just let them know, hey, congratulations on your event. And this goes for podcast hosts too. If you have a podcast show that you'd like to be on, um, reach out to that host. That's what we do. We'll, we'll connect with the host. We'll kind of understand, you know, well, what kind of a show do they have? Who are their typical guests? Um, how do they do their marketing? If they have a really good marketing plan and they have, you know, two, three, 400 episodes, and that's a good podcast to be on because they, you know, they have a far reach, but there's also those that, you know, maybe they have only got, you know, 20 or 25 episodes, which is good too. It just means that they don't, they don't have, you know, the frequency of podcast shows. Maybe they do it once a month or, or something like that, but connecting with them and leveraging LinkedIn has worked, I mean, fabulously for us um, and building the relationship because we're not just reaching out to them to, you know, Hey, book our speakers. I really want to kind of get into their mindset and understand how we can support them. And also as a speaker, um, social media is 
critical, not just on LinkedIn, but also Instagram. A lot of, you know, speakers have really, you know, leveraged um, Instagram. And then, of course, Facebook, um, where, you know, you have to be really careful on Facebook, the way that you present yourself as a speaker and making sure that, you know, number one, that you're giving of content, you know, the content that you've been creating. And now is a great time uh, now that we're all shelter in place where you can create your content and just really look at ways that you can um, maximize, uh, you know, some of the things that, that you've been creating, you know, build on that and look at ways to create a workshop from it or, you know, find a way to use it on a podcast, you know, create, um, if you have a topic, you know, it's not just something that you would present in an, you know, in an event like this where, you know, we're all on Zoom. But if you go on a podcast show, you can absolutely talk about that topic, but you're just going to talk about it in a different way, in an interactive, you know, type of format like what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. um, so really leveraging social media and making sure that you're consistent. Um, I know that um, a lot of uh, marketing people that we work with and people that we've partnered with, um, they say on LinkedIn, um, and this is one of the biggest influencers that, I mean, he has like over 300,000 followers on LinkedIn, had shared with me that you have to post on LinkedIn, and ladies, hold on to your seats, at least three times a day on LinkedIn. And it's different droppings. You know, maybe in the morning you're dropping something, in the afternoon you're dropping something, but it's totally different. So you wanna be creative, you wanna be mindful of your audience and, you know, who's your target market? You know, is it event planners? So maybe in the morning you, you reach out to event planners, you know, with your message and your call to action. And in the afternoon you're giving information, you're sharing a testimonial, or maybe, you know, there, there's something else that's on your mind that you want to share and get a poll. Um, and that could generate opportunity. You just have to kind of look beyond that and see, okay, what can I, what can I build on this? You know, and, and that's where a lot of the magic that we've had and the relationships that we've built um, have, have started. Yeah. Wow. I can, I can share a couple, I guess, a little bit of successes, not much. Of oh, a yes. Question, thanks, but, Patty. Um, I recently, I've been doing lots of speaking for many, many years and webinars and broad and all that kind of stuff. But recently, Women in Technology International had their first virtual summit a couple of weeks ago, and I was one of the speakers. And they've done 23 face-to-face -face summits. They were super skeptical about doing them yeah. virtually. And I have to say, it had it went very, very, very well. There were a few little minor technical glitches, but it went really well. I was one of the speakers, got rave reviews. Um, Congratulations the only on that. Too, in the afternoon, they were trying to do some coaching circles and they were trying to get people into small groups in different rooms. And that was a little bit wiggy, is my term, my, my technical term. Wiggy. <laughs> Um, but it went really well. And then I've been being on a lot of podcasts. I think I've been on eight podcasts the last two weeks. In fact, I just congratulations on that. that. Yeah. A podcast group that I put this picture of this little kid going, Oh my God, I, I booked myself to do three podcasts in one day. <laughs> I'm like, what in the heck were you thinking? Um, so yeah. that's been helpful. And then on LinkedIn, I'm starting to post more on LinkedIn, maybe not three times a day, but once a day. But sometimes mm -hmm. what I do is I go into LinkedIn, I see something else someone has shared. Like recently, there's been this female lead group that's sharing incredible information out of the UK. And I simply yeah. take one of their posts and I then share it and put some comment in, in there like, well, this is interesting. What do you think about this? Let's have a dialogue. Yes. So That's great. I mean, that that's more exactly so what I'm talking about. Yeah, and that could be. Yeah. I do some of my own content and then sometimes I'm just sharing something that somebody else posted with some kind of a comment or a thought um, mm -hmm. just yeah. to be more visible. And then I must be yeah. posting like 10, 15 Facebook posts a day. I mean, 10 different Facebook it, groups. And take a look at those podcasts. So you said eight in the last two weeks, Yep. right? Yep. And I'm posting okay. them on Facebook and LinkedIn and sending out emails with them and, you know, just saying, here's this, I did a podcast on... Ignite yeah. Your Purpose with Passion, Five Ways to Be an Empowered Woman Leader. I did one on building resiliency and emotional agility. And so different kind of topics out there. But if I um, I went through a class that Steve Olsher did, a guy that wrote. Oh, yeah, I know uh, Steve. Yeah, yeah, Steve's amazing. He yeah. had a five-day 
it was five day book five podcasts in five days and every day there were two hours of training i got more value out of this 65 dollar course i paid for yeah than the five thousand dollar boot camp i paid for to build my boot camp funnel or my book funnel mm -hmm. amazing content and he taught you how to go after certain kind of podcasts like don't go after katie couric right out of the gate right go yeah, after podcasts yeah there, and there's a yeah. certain number of shows and you know, they have so many reviews and how recent the shows are, but look for podcasts that are fairly active mm -hmm. that have obviously fit your niche or your topic of influence, your topic area, have a speaker one sheet for podcasts, separate right. from the regular one. Uh, I just learned so much from it. And it was just great to find out somebody who'd had, you know, recent, um, the kind of things he was talking about was have recent reviews, recent shows, like within the past month. Mm -hmm. Somebody on their podcast actually takes guests because some podcasters only do themselves. And so we had the other Right, story. right. And some podcasters, no, and thank you for sharing that, Patty. And, and some of the podcasters out there, um, and I know several of them, where they'll only bring a guest on if that's their client. So that, you know, that's something else, you know, where sometimes you'll come across that. And, you know, we've been able to get some of our clients on those shows because of, again, building that relationship, yep. being creative, you know, and, and working through that process. But I, I think that's great that, you know, you have that content now that, you know, with all of these different podcast shows and how are you leveraging that? Are you, are you talking about, you know, that you're a speaker that you could, yep. so you're able to share what you do and, and yep. speaker how people available can to book do. you? other other conferences workshops within companies my focus is women and my mission is empowering women and girls to be the best they can be in any endeavor they choose and so mm -hmm. i focus primarily on women and girls right now i do general leadership stuff but really focus very specifically on women and girls so i go through those kinds of podcasts or presentations or things and so then i will share all that stuff across all my social media um and I, they will share it across all of theirs um it's been really really fun and engaging you know a couple times twice i thought i was being i thought i was having a conversation with a podcaster about doing the interview and in the middle of the conversation they said stop let's just record this now and i'm thinking what am i wearing what's my makeup look like do i have lipstick on you know what's the background am i sitting in the dining room or am i sitting in my office right Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing. I mean, you know, just by any any of you that can comment on this as far as, you know, what has that experience been like? So let's say you if you're on a podcast show or you're, you know, doing a Zoom meeting like this, what is your preparation process? You yeah. know, as far as staging, because you're staging your own stage. Right. And you have to make sure you have your I have my water here. <laughs> I have my lighting, you know, where I have, you know, this, which. I'll use. I'm yep, sure I, I've got my O light over here. Yeah, and then I have my, you know, my yeah. microphone. So you have to have the tools. Yeah. There's, my yep, there's my little O light. Yep, <laughs> there you go. So you know, having the tools. So how have you prepared? It was would anybody like to share? Well, I I actually had questions for you about that, Shelley. Um, yes. Yeah. Because uh, I I was interested in the mechanics from the speakers uh, side. Um, when I, I, I host a podcast once a month, but that's, you know, audio and I, I stand up for that because it gives me energy. Yeah. You, know, you can see me, but I, I stand up and, and, uh, it's a 30 minute show. And, and so it gives me the energy during those 30 minutes and I've prepped and learned a lot about my guests, but I don't do any pre interviews with them because I want it to be fresh on the air. But what yeah. about on camera for these, these kind of, um, virtual presentations, do you have a recommendation, if it's a keynote versus a workshop facilitator role of standing or sitting and background and, you know, any? Yeah, no, and, 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 yeah, and thank you for asking that, Eileen, and, and I think it really boils down to what your comfort level is. Um, you want to, look at other shows that they've had, you know, if they're visual, um, where you could see what the other guests are doing too. So if they have, you know, a virtual background, um, I'll give you an example. I had a, um, I also co-host uh, the Veterans Chamber of Commerce radio show and I did it last Friday and my guest had a virtual background with a piano, a grand piano. And one of the guests thought it was his real piano. And, you know, we had to kind of say, well, it's not really a real piano. It's a virtual background. So, you know, the preparation could be, because you, you could go on Zoom 
before you get on any podcast okay. show. I do. Your own Zoom account. Look yep. at, you know, position the camera. You know, I don't want you to see all the, this stuff. I want you to just, I, I want you to see me. And like, I've been told my wall is bare. In fact, my own husband said, you need to put something on that wall. But I'm like, ah, I don't know about that. We'll see. Um, but when you're, when you're doing a podcast, you have to figure, you want people to hear what you're saying and not focus on, you know, your glasses or, you know, things that are going on around you because you have to worry about the noise level. You have to worry about, you know, doors, you know, that, I don't know about you all, but um, sometimes I've had where the doors are slamming downstairs and I'm thinking, okay, everybody knows I'm on a live event. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to let them know in advance and make sure that, you know, and, and maybe some of you don't have to worry about that, but we have dogs, you know, and, and we have to worry about the dogs and, you know, all of that. Um, but when you're doing a podcast show um, where it's video and audio, I think it's important to definitely go back and listen to a couple of the, the shows. Um, also, figure out what the message is that you want to be bringing and what do you want to get out of it because you're giving of your time. And if you're going to be on a podcast show for an hour and okay, it's done, that's it. You know, now I have content. Well, do a call to action, you know, give something away that is going to really encourage people to want to, you know, find out more about you or invite them to link to, uh, you know, uh, connect with you on LinkedIn or Instagram. And be sure that when that podcast host is interviewing you, before they even start, they, they say a little bit about you. Kind of like what Patty did for me, where you want them to be able to, to share, you know, who you are, what you do, and, you know, maybe some of the greatness that, you know, that you've been able to do so that they already know what kind of a guest you're going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a, I, I, I have a, a 100, I have a 250 word bio, a 100 word bio. I have a 100 word intro. Uh -huh. I actually have my picture and they usually with podcasters, a lot of them, they have a form you fill out or some of them, they just do it yeah. via email. But that, generally we agree on some starting questions. Like they'll say, can you send me three to five, seven questions we can use? We probably won't get to all of them. I did this when I had my own radio show. I'd have the guests send me some questions so that I was getting their message on point. Um, so that's things to think about, you know, doing as well as having some starter questions and just have sort of a boilerplate of stuff that if they say, can you send me something, you can mm -hmm. just copy and paste or, you know, send it in a word document or something. You know, when I'm, when I'm prepping folks to come on, ask me anything or, or join me in the ladies room, I have something I send out to them. Shelly, you got this, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. Cheryl, you got it when you were on my show before, um, where I, and one of the things I say, in addition to lighting and what you look like and not having laundry piled up behind you and all that kind of stuff, but turn off your email, turn off all of the stupid notifications you get on your computer mm -hmm. because they just ding, 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 ding. And it just ruins the recording and, and people yeah. don't think about that, you know, plus the fact that those things running in the background, slow your system down, you know, mm -hmm. and so you're, you know, there's nothing worse than getting dropped in the middle of, of your presentation. <laughs> yeah. I, I did. I didn't. I didn't schedule any podcasts this week because we're getting solar installed and it's right above my head. Yeah. You know. Oh. I'm glad it's not drilling now. They must be at lunch because usually it's just like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Shelly, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about maybe what what doesn't translate well into a virtual environment or something that that maybe we're accustomed to doing as part of our presentation that we would want to modify somewhat. And um, let me tell you kind of what I'm thinking about there mm -hmm. is, is I attended um, the Women Transforming Technology Conference. I usually speak for this conference, but this year I, I didn't. And then of course it all went virtual. And, um, and, the, and it, was, it was really awesome because they had, they always have very high caliber speakers. They have great keynotes. They have great closing speakers and all of that. But I attended a, a workshop that was run by two women from Back Porch. And uh -huh. it was um, it was interactive. It was, you know, heart and mind work, you know, as I had my book out and I'm making notes and I'm drawing the, they were doing some, you know, heartfelt mind mapping and all that. And I was like totally into it and just so impressed with how they did it. But yeah. then the end of the day, they had a very famous 
uh, keynote closer that sat in her living room and talk. It was the most boring thing ever. I just, you know, I mean, 10 minutes into it, I was like, bye, Sheila. Yeah. You know, I just, it, there was nothing, nothing there for me. So what, what yeah. kind of advice would you give to people about the way you show up and, and the content and the way you present it? Yeah. And, and, you know, that couch that you mentioned, I think that kind of talks to Eileen's point of standing up mm -hmm. um, and really having a high level of energy. I mean, if you need to drink coffee, drink coffee. But I think we can agree that doing this kind of a format will never replace being in person. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to make it as creative as we can. Um, I'm in a, a 10 star group uh, is one of the groups that I belong to and it's a CEO group. And they did some things where I thought, oh, that's innovative. Um, where it, it kind of gives you a little more visibility when you're, you know, when you're on these types of, you know, uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of times uh, there are so many, you know, so many different ways that you can prepare to be on, you know, whether you're a guest or you're, because we're, you know, obviously those of you who are guests today, I mean, we could see your background, we could see, you know, whether we have makeup on or we don't have makeup on. And, you know, the energy level, I think, is one of the things that we definitely need to bring to these kind of events. Mm -hmm. um, I, wouldn't you agree, all of you, as far as energy and, you know, just, um, you know, a smile, making sure that, you know, there, there's interaction, you know, get people active in the chat boxes, you know, you could do surveys, you could um, have a, create a poll, you could have, um, has anybody here had an event where you had breakout sessions mm -hmm. on Zoom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the, just the witty event in that, but that was managed from the background, but in terms of right. the other things I did, I, I had a chat box exercise every couple of every couple of slides or something they were, they were putting something in the chat box. And normally when I do my five ways, I talk about playing to your strengths and I use four birds of whether you're an eagle, an owl, a dove, or a peacock. And I have people go to opposite sides of the room. Well, I couldn't do that, but yeah. I had them in the chat box say, are you an eagle? Are you an owl? Are you a dove? Uh -huh. Are you a peacock? If so, what are the strengths of your style? What's the downs? So we had lots of engagement or um, you know, put down some words that you want to describe you as a leader. So there was a whole bunch yeah. of that, and I would call out some of the responses and answers. So that kept people really engaged. Mm -hmm. And and that brings up a good point too, because I think, you know, kind of to Patty's point where you want to have, um, when, when you're doing that kind of activity, you want to have a moderator or somebody that can support you if you're the one speaking. Um, so somebody to monitor the chat box, you know, like I, I had one client where she did a workshop and we had about 42 people attend and it was a paid workshop. Um, that's the other thing that there, there are ways to monetize this. Um, so she had about 42 people and her and her husband did the, you know, her, she was the speaker. Her husband was kind of the moderator. And what he would do is he would put in the chat box, reinforcing what she was saying. And, you know, we were all kind of, you know, watching and, and I was on the other end of it because I was the sponsor for that event. Um, so just watching that dynamic and, you know, how they did the breakout session and, you know, kind of prepared everybody and made sure that they knew what was happening. But in the very beginning of any event like this, I think you want to engage the audience as much as you can. Um, you know, welcoming everybody. And, and I wanted to kind of find out, okay, but, you know, maybe we could do a quick introduction with everyone. Would that be okay, Patty, if we do that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because I know, I know a few of you, but not, not everyone. But I'd love for you to, if we could do these things. So your name, your company, and I know you're probably all CWI members, um, but what is the one thing, your one ask, that you would love to find out about speaking? So if we could, who would like to start? Go on, Eileen. You, you had some good questions. <laughs> you start us out. Communications person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Eileen Gaffin. I have a public relations uh, firm and, called Steris Gaffin Media. And I've had the great pleasure of working with Shelly, partnering with Shelly um, to help my clients get more exposure in the speaking world. And um, yeah, I was asking more of a specific question. You, you started to answer it with this person that was facilitating the workshop. During workshops, or if you're a keynote speaker at a conference, do you recommend, or maybe the conference gives this direction? 
do you recommend standing during your keynote? Uh, or maybe the conference says you're going to be standing during your keynote. Um, and I've got a workshop coming up at the end of the month. I don't know, do I, uh, with PowerPoint slides. So do I just sit like this and I'm talking through my PowerPoint slides or do you recommend standing? That was where I was coming from. Oh, okay. Because it, it's a little hard to hear you, Eileen, because I'm kind of oh, leaning in. There we go. Yeah, I mean, I, I did hear what you said. So, and I apologize that I didn't answer it clearly the oh, last time. Yeah. But you're, so you're really asking about how do you take a conference or a workshop into your, into your home space, right? Where you're, how do you facilitate that? Is that yes. what I'm understanding? And, and, okay. um, and the preferred way or the uh, most effective way to engage the audience um, because like Patty was saying, sit, the speaker that was sitting on her couch and giving a talk yeah. kind of lost everybody. Mm -hmm. And so I really am interested in your expertise on that. Yes, and, and that's where, you know, depending on if you have a laptop or a desktop, do you have a laptop or a desktop? Laptop. Laptop. So really it's mobile. You can move it wherever you'd like. And I, I would recommend that, you know, if you're doing a workshop, um, and you have a PowerPoint. So you, you really want to be in a desk setting, I, I would think, okay. because you want to be able to, you know, take notes and, you know, be present with your audience. And you need to be able to have your hands free so that you can, you know, navigate the, the PowerPoint. Um, if you're more comfortable doing that standing up, then, you know, then that's good too. But I would just recommend that you have, you know, a nice desk space to be able to, to effectively be a workshop leader. Um, and engaging the audience again, just like um, Patty Grimm was mentioning, you know, get people yeah. active in the chat box, create um, breakout sessions if you can. And there's a way to do that with Zoom or, um, you know, other platforms offer it too. Um, also, um, I would say get reactions, you know, like you've got your reaction. Um, I'm, I'm sure you all know about this, but yeah. when you do the thumb thumbs up or you do, you know, the clap or you just say, you know, can I get everybody to just give me a, a, a high five, you know, that that's getting everybody kind of worked up and excited and, you know, cause you've got a lot of information to share. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that helps. Does that, that help? helps a lot. Thank you. Okay. And, and if you want, I'm, I'm always available by phone. We can, we can <laughs> brainstorm it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Eileen. Susan, how like about you? Susan, let's, let's hear from you. All right. Hi, Shelly. Thank you so much. Hi, Susan. Thank you for Appreciate being here. Appreciate that. Sorry for running, running behind and uh, starting here. Anyway, Susan Hafner and Businesses Excel Through Music. And ask would be, uh, to, uh, you know, what's, would you say best, best tool for learning, for improving speech? For improving speech? Yeah, improving speech. speaking. Because I know okay. about Toastmasters, um, there's so many things out there. So from your experience, what would be the best tool for learning good speaking techniques and tools? You know, there, there are a lot of things on the internet that you could um, look up on YouTube and, you know, learn from people that are uh, providing that kind of content online. I'm a firm believer in working with people directly. Um, I have, like right now, I am working with a improv coach because I need to loosen up and get, because I've got a podcast show and I don't want to show up, show up stiff. So I'm working with an improv coach and it's helping me tremendously. Um, I know a lot of people will work with um, or go to um, Toastmaster meetings, which I, you know, I think that's a great platform. However, if you want to be a you know, a professional speaker and really kind of go in the, the route of, you know, being a trainer, speaker, um, it, it, it helps with the foundation of the speaking. Um, but really, it's where you really want to start is what is your message? And what is it that you would like to share with other people and understanding, you know, where to start? And then if you feel comfortable, you know, depending on what your confidence level is with speaking, um, that's where you have to figure out, okay, am I comfortable getting in front of a group 
or am I timid? Am I, you know, just what, how do you feel about getting in front of a group? And whether it's even in this kind of a platform too on Zoom, because you're still like, I'm the one that is, you know, being, I'm, I'm right in the, the heat of this because I'm the one speaking. So I have to make sure that what comes out of my mouth is beneficial, valuable for all of you. So th that's where I think if you, you know, if you really are serious about speaking, I would look at yourself first and figure out, okay, where are the areas that I'm not feeling comfortable? Is it my confidence level? Is it because I'm, you know, like I was quiet for many, many years and I couldn't speak out. You couldn't get me to do this. I, I would rather, I would rather just crawl under a, under a rug. Um, but really when, and they say that public speaking is one of the people would rather not do that and die, you know, which is kind of weird where you think people would rather die than public speak. But really once you captivate an audience and you know that you have that it factor and you have information that they're going to benefit from, um, then that's going to help your confidence level. That's going to get you in a position where you can't wait to share this information. But depending on how you share the information, right? Because you want to make sure that you pronounce things clearly so people can hear you. You don't want to talk so fast that people can't understand and you know, you're all over the board and you're, you know, you want to really hone in on who you are as a person and as a presenter because people are, and, and I think for those of us that, you know, that have spoken in front of groups and, and have been in this kind of a situation, um, you know, there's times where you do really well and there's times where, oh my gosh, I could have done that differently, you know, but don't beat yourself up. Those are learning opportunities. That's where you can grow from it. And, you know, talk to friends that are speakers, you know, build relationships with people that are doing it really, really well and, and just kind of pick their brain um, or find a mentor, you know, someone that can help you and really get you in a position where um, you feel like you're, you're supported and someone that can really understand you and what it is that you want to accomplish being a speaker. That's awesome. Does that help, Susan? Very much. Very, very much. And I like what you said about the improv. Yes. Because I've tried, I've been in, I've done Toastmasters and some other things, but when you were talking about the improv, that's what addresses the weak areas, the lingering weak areas. Mm -hmm. And yes. yeah, and like you said, there's certain settings I'm great at. I used to tutor anatomy and physio and I mean, yeah. I was on and no problem. Wow. I did great. But yeah. I need it to be consistent because I know that like now if I'm in a setting that could be distractible, mm -hmm. my brain goes all over and I make no sense. It's yeah. harder. Yeah. It's harder to stay tracked on track. Hey Carly, what do you have to, to add? Introduce yourself and then you're hi, hi everyone. Thanks, Patty. I'm Carly hi, Carly. from Ely Escrow. And uh, one ask about speaking. Um, that's a tough one. Like, I don't, I'm just kind of getting comfortable myself, um, mm -hmm. just trying to build that confidence through repetition, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, just not being afraid of um, the haters because someone's always, and realizing there's always going to be haters and just trying to really focus on like my avatar, my, my group that I want to hear me. And then just worry about that, you know, just talk to those people. And then anyone else who doesn't want to hear what I have to say will eventually just kind of fall off and what I have to tell myself and just keep spreading my word and my message on how great escrow is and how much I can teach you about it to make the process smoother. That, yeah. And it's hard work. It, it, it can be definitely an escrow. It's a, dry, it's a very dry topic. And then it's um, also not, it's um, time sensitive. Like, you know, not uh -huh. everyone needs to know now but um, I just want to, what do they say, establish yourself as the community expert and stay in front of them. So when the, when the time is right, that they'll be like, hey, that one girl, she seemed to know a lot about, you know, escrow. I better call her now before I that's right. dive, dive into you. this. Yeah. So that's kind you. of my goal, but I'm not really sure a specific question. I'm learning every day a little more about it. And thank you for all your great yeah. information today. Oh, my uh, pleasure. And, you know, if I can share with you, just, you know, don't worry about what people think. Um, don't worry about the haters, you know, because chances are they're 
in all of you because you have the confidence and the information that you're sharing. And just remember that whatever you are sharing, that you're changing lives and you're helping people and you're educating people on escrow where, oh, I didn't know that. Or you know what? I like the way that Carly said that because that makes total sense. So share stories and, you know, make it be, be vulnerable, be vulnerable when you get up and speak and just, you know, like if, um, if you make a mistake, laugh about it, you know, don't worry about, oh gosh, you know, just be, be authentic and, and you'll, you'll do fine, Carly. Thank you. I think that's actually you trigger your statement triggered my question that I have. Oh, so good. Good. my question is finding that balance of um, improv improvisation and professionalism. Uh -huh. So it's like, you know, you want to be, you know, approachable, you want to be authentic, you want to be entertaining, but you also want to maintain that professional edge. So I think like with all of us individually, it's just finding that balance of what that balance. Oh, that, with what yeah. that is, you know, <laughs> Yeah, no, that that's, that's, we'll, we'll have to talk because I'll, I'll share, you, share a story with you about the improv and what I had to break through because I, I was in the corporate world for so many years and still she's in me, but I'm trying to <laughs> shake her and be more like Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the physical look, but just the, the behavior, yeah. have more fun. But I, I love what you're saying, Carly. That's great. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Liz, what did you have to say? So, you were raising your hand. Certainly. I first I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Elizabeth Smith, but I go by Liz, and I'm an executive coach for professional women in leadership. And I've done some speaking on the stage. I've also done Toastmasters and some other um, activities to promote, you know, speaking opportunities. However, my issue is now using virtual stage to speak. So mm -hmm. my question really has to do with, with myself, new to that area, where would you recommend I start using virtual mm -hmm. platforms to speak? Yeah, and I believe, you know, when you start, and ha have you already done any virtual speaking yet? Not much with Toastmasters on Zoom to do a speech. Okay, so Toastmasters. And, and again, it's a great platform and foundation, but that's more of a teaching platform where now you want to get out and you want to teach and share your message. So right. I would recommend, do, do you have a bio and all of the components that you need to, to be represented when you reach out to event planners? Uh, not, I had one, I'm revising it, so I need to do that. So that I will do. Okay. However, the issue so much for me is using this virtual platform, be it, whether it be Zoom versus webinar versus podcasts, where do I start? Where, what's the best media to start to get the practice that I need? to really feel yes. comfortable because my issue has to do with the technology. <laughs> <laughs> so the great thing is, the good Zoom news is, is easy. You, you know how to use Zoom. You're, oh, you're on it, you know how to use Zoom. Right. And, and it's easy. Gonna, oh, I'm sorry. I thought somebody said something. Oh, go ahead. Um, so you already know how to use Zoom and, and what's your comfort level between one to 10? 10 being for, best. For what? Zoom or being on Zoom and um, being participating on Zoom. Oh, Just the experience. Great. I haven't done a speech other than Toastmasters, which is an organized meeting. I really have not been the host per se of okay. a Zoom platform yet. Okay. And have you been on podcasts since COVID nineteen? Yeah. No See, podcast. That, okay. So the whole technology is new to me, and that's my my intention is to start using that because I'd be, like to get out there and do more. Obviously, you know. Okay. So here's what I recommend. You have a Zoom. Do you have a Zoom account, Liz? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I do. Now you know you can get on there all by yourself, right? You don't need yes. everybody on Zoom right. with you. So I would recommend that you take your signature talk and record yes. yourself. And, and just, you know, act as though you're, you're presenting in front of an audience and, you know, whether it's 20 minutes, a half hour, make sure that you record yourself and then watch it and 
and critique yourself and maybe even have someone else watch it that you trust and have them give you some feedback because the technology part of it, I can share with you that if you're in a Zoom like this and you know we have participants, um, you might wanna have a moderator, someone that can you know watch the chat box, um, you know, someone that can help you create a poll and, and it's easier than you think because I know that there's you know people out there probably within CWI that can help support you with this. Um, when it comes to you know really expanding the, the possibilities on Zoom. And once you have that recording, um, I would also encourage you to reach out to some podcast hosts mm -hmm. and look at doing a few podcast shows where they're in alignment with what you share and your message. Because there will be some podcasts out there where they're probably not a good fit and it's going to be an awkward conversation. So you want to be really, really crystal clear on what shows are going to be beneficial for you and the way to look for podcast shows um, look on LinkedIn you could you know there are a lot of podcasters there mm -hmm. and also when you do uh, you know you just go on the internet and you look for podcast shows and there are lists that are available and like with Patty Grimm when she went to Steve Olsher's um, event I believe that they gave you a list right Patty Gave us some, but not very many. We had to, he told us how to find them through iHeart and through Apple Podcasts. Yeah. And how to just start yeah. looking for them, you know, knowing what your topic, he calls it a topic of influence, a TOI. What is your specific specific thing you want to, that you want to talk about? Is it leadership? Is it women? Is it something else? What's a specific right. topic or topic area? Right. I right. Have a question. And, Sorry. Oh, yes. Patty, since you mentioned, is it Steve Osher? Yeah. And he provides, offers, courses on how to use what's his what's his um expertise? well he's he's huge he's amazingly famous he's even he wrote the book what is your what and he gives that away now for free so he's a huge post tester guy um he offers a program and i don't know when he's going to offer it again but basically it's five days of workshops actually there were six days for two hours a day on how to find the right podcast, what to look for, how to come up with a topic of influence. If somebody asked you what you did and you had to say it in three words or less, what would it be? Mine's women, empowerment, and uh, leadership. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. Thanks. Uh -huh. Sorry, Shelly, yeah. you were saying something. Yeah. And yeah, I believe that if you uh, do reach out to some of the hosts to Liz, um, they will walk you through the process. So they'll make sure that your audio is good, that your, you know, your everything. Like, for example, Patty and I got on a little bit earlier today. We made sure that the audio was good, the, you know, the background, everything, you know, was, was working. And most importantly, there are going to be problems, you know, minor problems. I, I, you know, as long as you bring that content and you bring your best self, don't worry about if, you know, if, I mean, if this picture were to fall, I'm not going to worry about it. You know, it fell, you know, and I'll just pick it up and put it back on, but just be open to being vulnerable with technology because there are ways you can watch videos on going back to YouTube and, you know, looking at videos, you could literally type in how to do a podcast show or how to set up my zoom meeting or, and, and just, you know, play around and, and, you know, build that com comfort level. Mm -hmm. Yes, using technology, that's technology. That's my area. Yeah, technology. <laughs> <laughs> so much in it. You can be too, trust oh, me, Sarah, like on the Wi-Fi. We, have, we haven't heard from you, Cheryl, so. Can I just ask? Yes, one? and yeah. Kelly, could you put your contact information in the chat box? Yes, you? I sure will. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And Cheryl, we haven't heard from you. Welcome. Hi, thank you. I was I have to listen to you and listen for a phone call, but I'm good. Um, oh, good. One of the things that I was uh, listening to, uh, I'm trying to shift virtually too, uh, mm -hmm. and it's it's been interesting. I've been on uh, several podcasts, good but I you. like that. I like the idea of uh, repurposing the podcast. I hadn't done that, mm -hmm. so I think I need to start putting some of those and I'm learning how to do the email sequencing more now so mm -hmm. uh, using that to uh, get out there more awesome. yes and because if people really listen to your podcast i have a client that reached out to me this week that 
I have never talked to, but she heard a podcast I did back in January, and she's ready to sign for my 12-week program. Oh, And I was just really sh shocked, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. like, you just never know who's watching, you know. Yes, so. and, and, that, and thank you for saying that, because a lot of, you know, a lot of people sometimes miss the fact that it's also really good to um, do Facebook Live. If, if you feel comfortable enough doing that, that'll get you out of your comfort zone and, and you know, also um, where you could, again, have clients, you know, find you and, and listen to you and, and maybe bring you new business. Right. Yeah. Cheryl, yeah. tell everybody what you do, what your area of focus is. Uh, I am a relationship coach and women's health expert. Uh, I, my target um, audience are women that are over 50 that are um, getting back into the dating scene or healing from past relationship challenges. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. She did a, a great Ask Me Anything. What was it, early last year? Early this year? This yeah, year is this gone. Year. It's been the longest damn year. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also had a lady that uh, reached out to me because um, I do have the, that's been confusing because I have two areas of expertise. The women's health piece and so I had a lady reach out that wanted me to speak on low birth weights and pregnancy you know mm -hmm. and so I'll have a virtual um, gig there for the 27th yeah and so I wasn't even thinking about that piece at that time but yeah when she saw me on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and saw my bio then she reached out for that so that's awesome still, yeah, and learning and think of how relevant your topic is right now with people that are, you know, there are couples that are in the same household, you know, talk about relationships. I mean, you could easily get on and, you know, do a Facebook uh, live or give, you know, really good information to help people get through this, this time right now. And, and always make sure that when you, you know, if you do a post on LinkedIn or, or Facebook, have a call to action. Because people, they'll read, you know, what, what you share. And then in the bottom, you want to make sure that you, you know, mention, you know, to book or to, you know, something to bring them to your website or, mm -hmm. you know, arrange to, uh, you know, set up a call with you just so that you can, you know, have that, that interaction and, and build your business by having people, you know, comment mm -hmm. or, or um, reach out to you. Mm -hmm. And Patty, I know that you, you sort of introduced yourself and what you do, but why don't you formally yeah. do that? Okay. Um, excuse me for a second. I put my headset in because the roofers are back. The solar oh. guys are back. <laughs> so I put my headset in. And, and if your sound is really echoey, sometimes it's better to have a headset in anyway. So yeah, um, that's I'm a good point. Yeah, yeah, I'm an author, speaker, trainer, coach. This is my book, Quiet Women Never Change History, Be Strong, Stand Up, Stand Out. Let's go kick some glass. So I'm all about helping women pursue their purpose with passion and be strong women leaders. I have five ways to be an empowered woman leader. I did a Sue talk a couple of years ago nice. called failing forward with vision. Um, and so, and I've been doing lots of virtual speaking webinars and like I said, podcasts. Um, and something that I did for my book is I paid a whole bunch of money to go to this author's boot camp to build a book funnel where people can buy the book for $10 and that forced me actually to record 14 webinars on different topics that are part of the upsells and downsells. So with doing podcasts, I can say to people, well, if you email me, which then now you get your, e they get their email for your subscription, I'll send you a 30 minute video on how to be confident, not cocky, bold, not bossy, or I'll send you something and I give, I give them the book offer. So it's in there as well. Mm -hmm. Kind of my question is sort of since the summits, many of the summits are going virtual and they're doing more virtual webinars, it's mm -hmm. harder and harder to get people to pay you for these things, right? Yes. I can promote the book, I can promote my coaching business or my other webinars for companies and corporations, but the, to me the harder thing is, is getting paid and then if we have time I have a hint for people about using PowerPoint to be your speaker notes too. So, mm -hmm. but I wanted to ask you first, you know, what's the best approach to get paid for more of these virtual events because they're saying, well, you're not traveling. Right. You're still giving of your information though. And you'll find that, you know, depending on there are virtual events out there that they typically do pay speakers for their live events. And they have a budget because they're still getting they're still getting sponsors. So mm -hmm. for you know for those 
uh, events that are virtual and they have, you know, hundreds of attendees, I would say that, you know, the, the way that you want to approach it would be just very matter of fact and make sure that, you know, they know that what you're bringing, that they're hiring you to do this. And, and you're, you know, this is what you can provide for them. This is what you're going to provide for, you know, you've got some tools that you give away that from what you were saying, where, you know, th this is free content that they're going to get. But in this, you know, situation, you, you know, you, you have a fee that, you know, that you charge when you actually do speaking. And it's, you know, it's a little bit different when it's not in person. So, right. you know, you, you have a different pricing uh, structure for live events that are in person versus virtually. And I would yeah. say that if it's a workshop that you want to create on your own, um, there are a lot of different ways to do that too, where I've, I've had many of my clients that are doing uh, paid. In fact, I'm doing another workshop uh, with another client on August 6th, which is she's a TED talker and she's a professor of voice. Um, so she and I are doing a workshop and that's going to be um, where we're doing it virtually and, you know, show it's a two hour and we had to price it. We had to make sure the value was there. And, you know, just by virtue of her doing being a professor has already, you know, been able to get us where people are actually um, purchasing tickets. And, you know, it just depends on really what that content is. And if people, if there's a market for people that need that information and figuring out who your target audience is. And if you have that target audience, make sure you really reach out and, and give them what they need so that they will you know, really feel comfortable saying, you know what, I need to go to Patty's event, or I want to go see Patty speak. But a lot of event planners, um, it, it's a mix between, you know, some just think, no, we're not going to pay anything because, you know, it's, but you have to just build the case that you're giving of your time, mm -hmm. you're going to customize it for them, your presentation, and that you are going to have, you know, you're going to help them promote the event, but just build in a lot of benefits that are going to be appealing to them so yeah. that they feel like, you know what, we do want to hire Patty. And, you know, you can even let them know that, look, I see that you have sponsors and I'm sure that, you know, they're, as far as a the budget, they're, even if it's an honorarium, they, they hopefully would be open, but if you don't ask, you won't get, you won't get, right? yeah. so you have yeah. to ask and think of a creative way that's comfortable for you where you don't feel like, Oh my gosh, I can't ask them. You know, I, and for me, it's easier to do it for my clients because I'm doing it for them, not for, not for me or us. So it's easier, you know, for me to ask those awkward questions. Yeah. Um, but you could do the same, you know, just by really understanding what your value is and, and honoring your value. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then one, one, one last thing I wanted to share for those of you talking about doing like webinars and things with PowerPoints and presentations. So many times when you're doing those on Zoom, they're going to see the PowerPoint slide and then your head's going to be someplace on the top or someplace you're going to be there. So I agree with Shelly sitting down when you're doing those is probably most appropriate so you can navigate your laptop better. But also yeah. use your slides to make key points, but also because I worked at Microsoft and we'd lived by PowerPoint. I mean, lived and died by PowerPoint, everything. Yeah. Is that also use certain things that trigger you. So if there's a certain picture that you put on your slides to make them more appealing, that reminds you of a story you want to tell. They're all, it's almost like your speaker notes, right? Don't read the slides, but use them as speaker notes. So if you have my five ways to be an empowered woman leader, right? So I've got the five ways and then I'll make a couple points with that and then I'll expand on it or tell a story. But I usually always have like some sort of a picture that triggers me. Oh, I want to tell that story about when that happened. Mm -hmm. And, and kind of going back to um, Liz's point and I, you know, with technology, I would really encourage those of you who haven't really like, I know Eileen, you're going to be doing your workshop. When you get on a zoom meeting, I would encourage you to practice with your PowerPoints practice, way practice. before you get on, because yeah. if you have lots of tabs open and you're, you know, you're going into a screen share and oh my gosh, they could see all your email, you know, it, it could be very embarrassing. So practice before you get on any kind of a zoom meeting with lots of people and just be really super confident when you get on there that you You've practiced, you know exactly how to get to that share screen. And, you know, if you have a dual screen, you got, you have to be careful of, you know, showing the wrong screen. So just really practice. And, and I know each of you will get out there and just be successful Thank you. doing this. 
Yeah, Shelly, this has just been wonderful. I think everybody has gotten something new out of this, you know, and, and some of us have gotten a whole ton new out of this. So I'm really, really grateful that you took so much time with us. I'm grateful to all of you that joined. And uh, for those of you that are listening to this in the, um, in the replay, you know, you're, you're, uh, feel free to reach out to Shelly if you have questions for her. You can reach Shelly at 909-519-3712 or luminaryleaders at gmail.com. And she has a fabulous website, uh, luminaryleaders.com. So take, you know, take a look at it and check it out and, um, and, and just share this information out, you know, to those of us around us. So, you know, the, the best, um, speaking telling your story is the best way you know to reach to reach people so thanks again so much Shelly everyone have a thank wonderful you. day thank you day. and we will see you the next time thank you ladies it's your time go out and just capture it <laughs>